Let's face it, AI agents are complicated. Well, that's because most tutorials are complicated. My friend, chances are you're watching this video because you're intrigued how AI agents operate behind the scenes. You want to know how to build your own from scratch without relying on intermediary libraries like Langchain or Llama Index. But before you start building and deploying your AI agents, watch this video until the end. I'm going to show you how you can use the OpenAI Assistant API to unlock the agent framework and also equip your agents with search capabilities to unlock the full potential of your AI agents. So using the OpenAI Assistant API takes the guesswork and complexity out of building AI agents. Unlike other solutions that require intermediary libraries like Langchain or Llama Index, the Assistant API streamlines the process, allowing you to create powerful agents without dealing with intricate steps and dependencies. This code and the framework has already been set up for you by OpenAI. You just need to go through the documentation, understand the components that goes behind creating these assistants. I'm going to reveal how you can create your own AI assistant using Python code in a little bit. But before I do, let's talk about what are AI agents. So an agent is powered by a large language model or an LLM. Think about GPT 3.5, 4, Turbo, etc. This is the brain that goes behind the agent. So the agent can take a query. You can send a message to the agent and then it can reason about it. It can decide if it needs to use a specific tool and then use that tool to achieve the result or affect its environment. The OpenAI Assistant or Agent has three kinds of tools available at its disposal. It has the code interpreter, the file search, and something called function calling. So if I can have your attention on the screen right here. So let's say this is your agent. So the agent is going to have access to a couple of things. The first thing is going to be a prompt. Prompt is a set of instructions for your agent. Think of it like a job description for an employee. If the prompt is very specific and clear, the agent now knows exactly what is the inference space and what it needs to do exactly to get the job done. The second piece is going to be the threads are a collection of messages. It's a back and forth conversation between the user and the agent. Okay, so as the user and agent interacts, it builds up a whole conversation. And that conversation can also be used to answer the question. The agent can also have access to something called files. Files can be anything like PDF, Word doc, TXT files, etc. These files can also help provide context to the agent. Now the agent has more domain specific knowledge. It's not answering questions based on general intelligence. It is now equipped with knowledge provided by you or your business, etc. So it can be much more specialized in its task. And the last thing the agent has access to is tools. Tools are tasks that the agent can carry out. Now, as I mentioned before, the OpenAI Assistant framework already gives you access to three kinds of tools, the code interpreter, file search, and the function calling. Now, I've already mentioned you have files, so you can use the file search tool to search through the files. The agent uses something called file search and a vector database to look through your files, get meaning, and then answer to your question. So all the implementation on the back end has been done by OpenAI, so you don't have to worry about all the search capabilities, etc. You can just call the file search tool to search through your database. So another cool tool that the OpenAI provided to you with its framework is the code interpreter. Okay, so as you know, the LM models by itself is not good with mathematics. When you have something called code interpreter, it can now do complex data analysis, do mathematic calculations, and also generate reports and charts. You can already think about creating an agent that does data analysis, stock trading, etc., or anything that deals with math. The function calling is also a really cool feature that OpenAI has provided because by using the function call, you can now connect with other external systems or platforms. So you're not restrained by the OpenAI tools and resources. You can connect with your own vector database. You can connect with the search provider. As you know, when you take ChatGPT out of the ChatGPT interface and you start using the OpenAI Assistant API, you do not have access to the search capabilities. So I'm going to show you in this video how you can use Perplexity API to equip your OpenAI Assistant or your AI agent with search capabilities. And this is possible with the function calling feature. So in the Python tutorial for this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create two kinds of tools. The first tool is gonna to allow your agent to search through the internet. We're gonna be using something called Perplexity API. So when you send a request to the agent, the agent can use this tool to now search the internet, compile and summarize its findings and assemble all that into a concise answer for you. And the next tool that we're going to equip our agent with is the file download tool. So let's say you search the internet for 10 best hikes in your area as of the latest date, right? And it's going to go search the internet, get that information, and then it can call the second tool to download that information into our local drive. 
And by extension, that also means that we also have to provide clear and concise instructions to tell the agent when to exactly search and when to exactly download the files. So the agent knows when and how to carry out these tasks. This is vital. Before you have complete control how you can design your tool. So you can write your Python script, wrap it into a function, wrap it into a tool, so, so that now the agent can call these tools to carry out these tasks. For example, you created an AI agent that is a personal finance bot. So now when the user interacts with this agent, it's going to start something called thread. A thread, like I mentioned before, it's a collection of messages. And as the user interacts with the agent, it's going to build up conversation history. So the agent now can derive some kind of context or meaning in terms of the topic that the user is talking about. So the agent has determined that the user is talking about retirement planning. The user's message is, how much should I contribute to my retirement plan? So when the agent has the thread and the user's message, it can now create something called a run function. So the agent looks through all the available tools to provide the response. The agent determines it has the code interpreter tool available, which allows the agent to do mathematics and calculations. So it's going to use this tool. And the great thing about the OpenAI system API, you can see behind the hood what's happening as the agent is thinking through and solving the problem. For example, if it's a mathematics tutor and you want the user to understand exactly the steps involved in solving the problem, that would be very important. But once the agent has finished running the tools and retrieving all the context for the conversation, it's going to create a message. And the assistance message here is you should contribute 478 per year. So this is how the agent and the user is communicating. But understand by using an agent framework, you're using much more than an LM model. You are using something called memory by the use of threads, which allows persistent conversations. You're also equipping your agent with specific files. So it's more specialized. Now let's dive into some coding. I'm going to show you two examples. One example is going to be with the Google Collaboratory, where you're going to be able to create the assistant, create the thread, create the run and stream the response back from the assistant. Very easy. Uh, this is done in four steps and we create our tool that will allow the agent to search the internet. And we're using this with the perplexity API. I'm going to walk you through this in a little bit. The second example, which I'm going to show is through the streamlet interface, and this will create a front end interface for your agent so that so you can interact with the agent with streaming capabilities through a chat interface. We're also going to create another function that will allow you to store the searched results into your local drive. Okay, I'm going to do all of this with the function calling feature. So I'm going to cover that as well. So let's cover example one, which is Google Collaboratory. I want you to see what's happening as you're building the agent, as well as creating the custom tools that will be called by the agent. Okay. So with each step, it's really important that you understand some of the nuances. So first and foremost, we're going to install the open AI library. As we're installing this library, let me walk you through the tools.py file. And now don't worry, this can be a little bit complicated at first. This is the schema provided by OpenAI. As you can see, when we're creating our assistant, we need to also create our tools. And these tools can be called by the function calling feature, right? So we specify this as a function. And again, most of these are, can be repurposed. They all look the same. You just need to change the name, the description, and uh, specify the parameters that are going to be used. Now, this is just like a function. If you are familiar with basic Python coding that uh, you know that Functions allow you to create blocks of code that you can use and repurpose uh, in different areas of your script. If you're new to Python, I recommend you take the Python Basics for AI course where I talk about functions in more detail and also introduce you to the components of a function. As you know, functions have an input and an output as well as the body. So this is where we're going to specify the details of the function for the assistant. So the assistant knows what are the functions that it can call to answer the user's questions. So, so we create the search query function. It takes query as an input and it returns the message back from the search model. We're using the Llama 3 Zoner online model provided by Perplexity. Perplexity provides you uh, search capable open source as well as proprietary models uh, that you can use. And of course, they provide it to you with the API. So you're going to plug in the API key right here. And I also added a print statement. So on the back end, I can see what's happening. As the assistant is running the function, uh, it's going to say searching online that shows that this function is working, etc. Also, the code that I'm going to use for this video is going to be available in the school community under the resource hub. And as you're checking out the amazing resources, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified every time I drop a new video. So this file is saved as tools.py. So this is great. 
we've loaded up the OpenAI library. And this is where we're going to authenticate uh, the client object with our OpenAI API key. This authenticates us with the OpenAI servers. So we've added the API key under the secret section. So this is all good to go. So now that we have authenticated ourselves, we're going to create the assistant. You are a helpful assistant. We specify the models. And this is where we're also going to import the tools that we've set up right here with the OpenAI schema. So if you look at the function calling quick start, this is how OpenAI has specified that we create our OpenAI agents. So just pay attention to the schema they're using. And I'm using the same schema right here to create my function search query with the parameters, uh, which is the query and it's a type string. Okay. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now. If you use it a couple of times, you can just use it over and over again. It's the same process every time. So you take the tools and uh, it's basically you plug it right here. So now you created an assistant with the tools that it can use for uh, running function calling. So we can actually see the assistant ID by typing assistant right here. This is the assistant ID. You can also go to OpenAI dashboard and see that this assistant is available. Um, so the next step after you create the system is creating the thread. So we are going to create an empty thread with the message. You're going to type search for 2024 Copa America schedule Create the thread. So the thread and the message is created. Now the next piece is creating the run right here with streaming. This is the code that OpenAI has provided us to stream the responses from the assistant. So we will use this. The only thing I would change is this part right here uh, at tool outputs with an empty list. I'm going to just get rid of all this and just add this line of code. This makes it more dynamic. So whatever I put under the function class is going to be pulled right here along with the function name and also the uh, attributes of the function. So I don't have to change anything here. You can also use this for your case and just add new functions on top of this. So whenever you add another additional function, function you just create a new function like this, and then you're going to add um, additional tools. So you will have multiple functions, one, two, something like that. And, um, and you don't have to change anything on the left side right here. Everything will be pulled in dynamically, uh, including the tools and uh, including the function name and attributes. So let's go ahead and run this. As you can see, the agent has provided a search query, which is 2024. Copa America schedule. So it, it's using the perplexity API to uh, search the internet for the schedule from June 20 to July 14, 2024. So it's very recent. Go ahead and check whether the details are pulled in correctly. So you can see June 20, United States versus Bolivia, 6 p.m. This is very recent. So we're going to go here at Fox, United States versus Bolivia. So it's accurate. So what's happening is the main agent is sending off function call. So when it's sending off the function call, it's assembling a query to be used for the search assistant. So the query that it sent off was 2024 Copa America schedule. Okay, very easy, simple, and the search uh, and the search agent went off to do the searches using the perplexity API. And you can also specify the prompt for your search agent right here. And the search agent returns a response. And the main agent assembles all that information into a coherent response. Okay, and this is streamed right here. This is how NY LM model stands out because you can not only do Google searches, but you can also organize the information in a way that is best suited for you. So for example, if you want to say search for 2024 Copa America schedule uh, for USA matches only, and then we search again. Okay. Notice that the query has changed and now we're getting the schedule only for USA. So in the next example, I'm going to show you how you can create another function call that will take this response or any information that you provide and create a document with that information, store it in your local drive. Okay, so this is another task that can be performed. Great thing with the agent framework and the function calling tool is that the agent understands when and how to call these functions. You can also provide instructions to your agent in terms of certain guidelines to follow as it's calling these functions. This demonstration showcases the agent's potential and limitations. Feel free to adapt this pattern for your use case and share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, give us a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. GPT Pioneers, let's go.